share services. An application was made to the state for such a grant, and it was uh, approved by the state of New York. And therefore, uh, as part of that process, an IMA must be executed between the four municipalities uh, that sets forth their understanding of the agreement. And that, that intermissible agreement you have before you. This was uh, first drafted by myself, and it was reviewed by the other municipalities. We had a meeting a couple of weeks ago where we hammered out some of the, the issues, and then this, this document you have before you is the final product based upon those conversations. Attached to this document are two things, a request for proposals and a work plan. The work plan has already been submitted to New York State and has been approved. Actually, it was their work plan to us. Uh, the RFP is the RFP that will go out to uh, potential consultants who would then actually conduct the study uh, and then uh, report back to, to the municipalities. As you can see, it's a 16-month uh, work plan. And uh, so far, I think we're, we're pretty close to ske on schedule. We had agreed that the four municipalities would endeavor to adopt this IMA before the end of this month. I believe tonight, Porchester will be adopting it. And I'm uh, confident Rye Brook and Mamaronek will be adopting it in the near future. So uh, the IMA sets forth all of the responsibilities of the municipalities. Supervisor will chair the steering committee. Each municipality will have an equal vote. Uh, it does require a majority vote, meaning three of the four, in order to select a consultant or do anything else. Uh, at the end of the study, uh, a report will be drafted by the consultant, which will be presented to each municipality, and then it will be up to each municipality to do whatever they want, have public meetings, public hearings, discuss it, get more information, act, not act. It, only a municipality, which is in this community, Sovereign, can do, make a decision on that basis. So. No one is obligated to do anything here other than participate in the study, and three of the four municipalities are contributing $5,000 additional to the study. And that's the town of Rye, the village of Rye Brook, and the village of Port Great. All four of them have to pass Correct. to do this? Yes. Not just three? That's right. That part. Yeah. Okay. And all, all four uh, mayors were at the meetings, and they've all been active participants. Uh, they've also agreed to bring in the town of Mamaronek, notice them, the village of Larchmont, who would be impacted by any change in Rynex status. And I think uh, we agreed to bring in the city of Rye as well, because there's, you know, there's a lot of issues here, uh, but it, there could be some other good things that come out of this, which is a, a better way to share services or make things work better for them. Terrific. Um, now, do we have to, uh, does the board have to approve an RFP? I'm not, I know we have to approve the no, IMA. No, by, 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 by approving the IMA, they're essentially giving you the authority to approve the, I, the, the RFP. But the, the RFP is attached to the... But just as a general matter, if I, want, we want to, if, if I want to instruct Bishop to issue an RFP, does the board have to approve the issuance of the RFP? My preference is, no, legally they, you do okay. not, but I think it's best if they did. It's my... Because you're, if, whatever comes back, the board will say we never really authorized the issuance of the RFP in the first place, so we're not going okay, to Okay, but even better, because I, there's a couple of things I want to discuss tonight, and, and, and so the question is, uh, certainly there's no need for the board to uh, approve the drafting of an RFP. And what I'm hearing you say is it's better uh, a better policy, not legal requirement, that the board see the RFP before it right. go out, so then the board knows what it's going to be evaluating the when it goes back. The board would have to vote to, to adopt or to, to accept or approve any vendor who right. comes in as a result of the RFP. Got That's it. Right. Okay. Good. Terrific. Okay. So, uh, so this IMA needs to be adopted by... by any questions, board. comments on the, the IMA package? And we've been talking about this for a long time. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Or did you? Sorry, did you? Uh, did you want to make? No, I just uh, I just want to say it again that uh, you know just want this board to be aware that if, if this if this report comes back and everything is pointing in the right direction that uh, it's going to be best for the, all the residents and the taxpayers to dissolve the town of Rye. I'm voting for it. So that's where we're, that's where we're going with this. Well, absolutely, and I, and I, I the, the worst thing. The wor I I know. I, I, I wanted to give you one. Comment. No, no, no. But I, that, I wanted. Would that, would that eliminate the town attorney position? It would. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. I, but no, I here's, just to understand but, one thing: the, the, the state of New York would ultimately, as you are a creature of the state of New York, right? As I'm a creature. Are, 
uh, the state legislature and governor would have to actually dissolve the town. Yeah. Is, is, I just want to be clear. Well, I've, it's I've, not something a town board could do or a village board. Uh, however, with villages, as you know, under the formal law, if 10% of the people petition they can by referendum abolish and dissolve the village. No such uh, requirement for a town. You would require an act of the state legislature. Well, plus you need votes from each of the communities, right? right. I mean, it's a no, whole long Well, you don't. Well, do you? In, um, yeah, for a, town, for, for a town to dissolve, no, you just need a state legislature. Right, you don't need yeah. approval. Well, what, you're saying no. the constituents of the town of Rye wouldn't have to vote on this? No. No, no the state legislature votes on it. But, they, by, but you'd be sending up a home rule message saying, speaking on behalf of your constituents, please dissolve us. But no. There's no right. vote. To become a town village, to vote to, for a village to become a town village, that requires a vote of the entire town. So if the uh, if the village of Mamaroneck wanted to be a town village, uh, all of the the, the Rhineck and the town of Mamaroneck all votes on it. So actually, help, so the procedure would be a little different for dissolving a town. So you we would we get a legislative action. Yeah, you send a home rule message to your assembly and Senate and say we want to. Is all the all town. Town. Now, now, does every but does every community have to come within a town except for cities? In other words, if say hypothetically the town, you know, we sent a home rule message to dissolve us, if the village of Rybrook did not want to be a coterminous town village, then where are you? Or where are we? Well, that's in the state probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> what? Every village has to be within a town unless it's a town village. So how would so what's wouldn't the happen sequence? Then? It wouldn't happen. Exactly. So what which would, comes first? Yeah. <laughs> which comes first well, is the well, which comes first would be the village becoming a town village. If that's at all possible, they'd have to want it. They'd have to want it. Otherwise, it's irrelevant what we want. Yeah. I mean, Listen. part of, by the way, part of the study is right. the consultant would have to lay out a roadmap how yeah, to exactly. get there if that's where you right. want to go. Right. So, yeah. so, so lot, getting, lots getting, of unanswered questions as you raised in your email about what happens to Wright Town Park, what happens to Crawford Park, what happens to the bridges, all the bonds, you know, the, the, this building. I mean, a lot of questions that would have to be answered. So, just getting back to where Sorry. we are, and I'm, I'm just going to repeat myself again, is that. Towns and villages and cities undergo studies year after year after year. And the study is done. The taxpayers pay for the study, or grants pay for the study, which ultimately comes from the taxpayers. And there's a, there's a resolution at the end. So there's some resolve. And the study suggests something. And nothing gets done. I just don't want to be the board that's the recipient of the study that tells us to do something in the best interest of the taxpayers and the residents, and we don't act on it. That's my only thing. So uh, yeah, I'm in thank favor you. of it. Aye. Th yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, uh, Deputy Supervisor Lino, for those comments, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, this, this is not a, uh, a make-work exercise. I couldn't agree more. A second uh, to approve the IMA. Second. Second. <laughs> Gail Farr. <laughs> Aye. Mendocino. Aye. Mayors. Aye. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Mr. Uh, Markowitz. Uh, we've got two. Can I introduce this? We got two groups here that. Well, go ahead. Go right ahead. Well, we got two groups here uh, the, the appraisers that you're looking to uh, help you and assist you with the work for the SCAR. For the small claims charges. assessment reviews filed in 2011. These represent residential properties that have made, that have made court filings in Westchester County. Um, let me make just sort of an overview comment about the background. Um, what's happened this year that's different from previous years is the court system has put every jurisdiction under tremendous pressure. Uh, they've scheduled everybody much more tightly. They've, they've increased the amount of cases per day. And the reason for that is that the court system's experienced a, somewhere, I'm guessing, but a two to three hundred percent or two to three time increase in the number of filings from last year to this year. Yeah, I'll just pause there for two seconds. So uh, most municipalities, other than the town of Rye, they've had a two to three hundred percent increase in the number of uh, SCAR filings, residential filings. And what's, what's been our numbers? Our, 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 the number of complaints we received increased approximately 20% from last year. From what to year. what? From 139 to approximately 170. And why do you think ours were so much less than everybody else? Well, I think because we do annual assessing and we update the assessments and the uh, assessment roll every year. Um, the results <laughs> of all these filings is as follows. In 2010, a typical day for myself as the assessor in court on small claims assessment reviews would comprise 15 court cases. 
This year, in 2011, I have 50 cases a day scheduled, just to give you a little contrast. So that puts tremendous pressures on both sides as well as the court system. That's why we have before this board two resolutions to approve fee schedules in connection with small claims assessment. Well, and I have a question. When you say court system, these are all done in this building, right? This no, thing? these are not done in this They're building. Not They're done, done in White Plains. That's been changed? No. What happened, here's how it breaks out. The, all the court cases are filed in Westchester County. If you are an owner filing a lawsuit, of which there are approximately 15 of those, they send a hearing officer to the building to hold the case. Okay, for the un other uh, 165 cases, which are all filed by professionals, they have a judge in White Plains, we have a hearing in the courtroom. I thought you were talking about SCAR proceedings. SCAR proceedings, yeah, I am. I thought this, the, within the, the SCAR system differentiates between owners suing and representatives suing. If there's a professional representing the homeowner, I get to go in front of the judge with 50 cases a day. Okay, so, oh, but not our cases, 50 from all over the county. No, 50 town cases. And how many, and how many, could you break down how many SCAR cases are now uh, pro se, you know, people doing, there representing themselves versus professionals? There are 15 pro se and 100 and, uh, whatever the math is, 50, 165, 155. Is that a change in ratios from the past? That is absolutely a change in ratio. It's a clear increase in the number of professionals uh, suing this town, and this has been experienced countywide. That's residential, at the that's residential. residential. Why do you think that's changed, that people aren't doing it, you know, themselves anymore? Because I think that everybody gets solicited, all property owners get solicited, it's easy, it's convenient. Um, that's, you know, it's business. And that's what this is about, it's a business. How do they charge? Uh, typically they take a percent of the first year savings. Um, near as I can figure, it varies anywhere from typically a third to a half. Sometimes it goes into the second year. And they don't, otherwise there's no charge? Correct. Heck of a system. So, this year we received two bids um, to do the small claims assessment review. Um, in contrast with last year, the pricing is very, very similar. Um, in the case of one family houses, which last year were costing us $265, we have one bid for $275 and one bid for $260. The larger residential properties are essentially similar or within $10 of one another from last year. Um, I do expect this year to rely a little bit more on appraisers because of the tight time table. You know, 50 a day, you almost can't talk to the other side. And this year the court has imposed stricter rules about being prepared. In the past, the court system sort of let people come in. This was not the town of Rye, but let other assessors and other sides come in unprepared. This year they've made it very clear. You come prepared or we kill you. How much, uh, how much should we budget for, how much should we budget for appraisals? Uh, in, in 2010, the town budgeted $80,000 for appraisals. We expended $34,000 of which approximately $14,500 was for residential appraisals. That amounted to approximately 45 appraisals last year. This year I expect to uh, make better, use more heavily the outside appraisers. So, and how much have we budgeted this year? We budgeted $90,000. So, and our expectation then My is expectation is that we will really expand for the scores somewhere in the vicinity of thirty-five to $45,000. Perfect. Great. Any other questions for Mr. Marcus? Well, so uh, wait, we, so you want both of these companies? Is that yeah, right? yeah, yeah, because well, of the tight well, timetable, okay. I can't rely upon one company. They're so bunched together. But we might not necessarily spend that amount of money. We might. Spend I will tell you it. honestly, I do not ex expect to expend the amounts in the resolutions. My problem is I have to worry about the availability of appraisers okay. and time. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, but it's still the question would arise. I mean, if you're asking for identical services, couldn't you get one? You know, it seems to me that you can get a better price from one with the promise of basically double the business. That's how we got to those numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but you say you plan to use both of them. Just on availability basis. Yes. The, just the, I, when you have 50 trials each week for four weeks in a row, how much time do you get and how it takes a number of appraisers to go out do inspections, do appraisals. I, have, I typically review all those or submit it in my office. Is there a market rate for these, the service? 
Well, if I were a bank, I would tell you the rate's higher. What was the, um, bank, what was the bank rate? bank would typically be at this point from one family house in the vicinity about $350. And what are we offering? What are you expecting that the dollars will cost? I'm, I'm expecting that the, the typical appraisal for one family house that we're paying anywhere from 260 to 265 $270 um, compares with the, the bank rate of 350 and the banks do volume. Well, the banks have changed, though. The banks are paying much, much less. But they're not charging they're, they're the all. homeowners any less. Okay, but they're calling in people from all over the place. This may well, be to our advantage, but these people hopefully are more uh, local. The, the flip side of that are there are less appraisers available. Because and, and many of them who are still left are doing this kind of work. For, for towns. Yes. And Mitch, I'm the sure towns have the same problem, well, actually a much greater problem than we do at this point. And I'm sure you don't want to overburden one organization so they so their quality of work uh, changes. So, Absolutely. So obviously we want to make sure that we have... Uh, a fair amount of people working for us that have the time to work for us that are going to give us a better product to protect the town. And do it in, in a timely manner. Understood. Can we take both of these resolutions together? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to make a, uh, a motion that we approve resolution D and E, one for landmark appraisal group for $35,000 not to exceed and one for the Garofalo appraisals, uh, also for $35,000, not to exceed $35,000. And hopefully won't add up to that much either. I do not expect <laughs> to achieve those levels. The reason I put the levels so high is because I may use one a little bit more than the other. I don't know yet. Right. Second. Good. <laughs> okay. Oh. Gelfo. Thank you. Aye. Mendocino. Aye. Aye. Oris. Aye. Villanova. Yes. Carver. Yes. Thank you. Uh, oh, actually, do you want to uh, just... Uh, Save you a trip up later in the meeting. Um, we have uh, okay. just let the pit public at home know uh, we're sending out. Um, Town will be sending out actually this week. Probably they'll be in the mail Wednesday, so that people will start receiving them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, what's known as a data mailer. It is a mailing from the town and the town's vendor, Vision Appraisal Technology. Um, it is telling every property owner, it's giving them a description of the property they own and asking them to please review the description. And in the event that the description does not appear correct, please mark the form, send it back to us, fax it back to us, email it back to us, and all those contacts are on there along with an 800 number to ask any questions about definitions and what something may mean. Um, what the town's doing is providing... Do we have an 800 number? There will be an 800 number on there. Yes. Interesting. And they, okay. Oh, great. Yes. And, and the intent here is to um, give everybody an opportunity to review the inventory of their property, and in particular, the town um, paid vision appraisal to inspect all the commercial properties, so there is updated data in particular relative to the commercial properties, but there's also been a lot of work done in connection with residential properties. So we'd like everybody to please review the form, review your description. If there are any inaccuracies or inconsistencies, please mark it up, sign it, give us your phone number, and send it back to us so we can review it. The intent here is to get everybody's inventory and data as accurate as possible in preparation of recalculating values for the 2011 assessment law, which is later this year. So when would it be due back? What's We've asked deadline? everybody to return it in seven days. Oh, okay. It's a one-page piece of paper. You just cross out anything you disagree with, sign it, give us your phone number, send it back. Okay. It's as simple as I can possibly make it. Beautiful. So for everybody at home, uh, this is an important data mailer. The more accurate our information, uh, the better we can assess and evaluate your taxes and, and ensure tax equity and tax uh, fairness. This is part of our ongoing effort with their external vendor. And, and we're seeing the benefit this year in terms of the fewer SCAR challenges, uh, which helps all the constituents in the right. Mr. Marcus, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Town Clerk Vespia. <laughs> Greg's going to come up. And okay. Just Perfect. Great. Right. Thank you. Mr. Arcaro. Number no, uh, I don't I guess we have. The cert wasn't ready. The cert's not happening. Okay. okay. Oh, all right, so we're not doing that. No, there's no cert tonight. Uh, right. Mr. Noto and I need to review those before they go. We had a chance to do that. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, before you is a short resolution uh, in which the town is requesting authorization to file a